Ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 National Endowment for the Arts National Heritage Fellow, Joni Madden, with guitarist, Zan McLeod. Hello, <laughs> I'm Nicole Saylor. I am the director of the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of the entire staff, I would like to thank you for spending this special occasion with us. 
We are thrilled to have so many National Heritage Fellows assembled here together today. Uh, we enjoyed hosting some of you this morning in our reading room. Um, so first, to tell you just briefly about the American Folklife Center, we document and share the many expressions of human experience to inspire, revitalize, and perpetuate living traditions. Designated by the US Congress in 1976 as the National Center for Folklife Documentation and Research, the Center stewards archival collections, creates public programs, and exchanges knowledge and expertise. The Center's work encourages diversity of expression and fosters community participation in the collective creation of cultural memory. We're home to one of the largest archives of ethnographic materials in the, from the United States and around the world, with just about seven million items uh, from 19th century to the present. Uh, what's relevant particularly tonight is that we are a critical repository for information about the National Heritage Fellowship, and we provide a public platform to showcase uh, fellows' talents. So for example, recipients of the National Heritage Fellowships are featured in more than 450 AFC collections. Uh, staff at the center have organized 60 concerts, eight lectures, 24 oral history interviews, as well as authored 19 blog posts on recipients of the National Heritage Fellowship. The center's archives holds administrative documentation of the NEA uh, fellowship program, ranging from the 80s uh, into the late 90s. As well, uh, we're also the home of the best Lomax Haas collection. And she was the first administrator of the National Heritage Fellowships at NEA. Uh, in honor of tonight's celebration, we've released an online research guide that provides detailed information about those uh, wonderful materials. All right, so we hope you enjoy this evening's festivities. We look forward to celebrating with you. And now, please welcome Deputy Librarian uh, for Library Collections and Services, Robin Dale. Chair Jackson, National Heritage Fellows, and special guests, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the Library of Congress. We're delighted to host this annual celebration of artistic creativity and achievement here at the nation's library, one of the world's most celebrated cultural institutions. The National Endowment for the Arts National Heritage Fellowship is the nation's highest honor for traditional artists. The fellows for 2023 are an outstanding group who truly embody America's diversity and creative spirit. We're here to honor these great traditional artists who come from all over the country and represent many communities and traditions. The Library of Congress's mission is to engage, inspire, and inform Congress and the American people with a universal and enduring source of knowledge and creativity. We're proud of this important collaboration with the National Endowment for the Arts and the Library of Congress because it helps us carry out that mission. The National Heritage Fellows Collection, which as Nikki said, is housed here at the library's American Folklife Center, documents the kinds of artistic genius that are present right here in the room tonight. By keeping this documentation safe at the library and by sharing it with others, we serve and inspire the American people with rich, diverse, and enduring knowledge and creativity. So please do come back and visit us again to discover the National Heritage Fellows collections and the many treasures that are here at the library. And in the meantime, please enjoy this very special ceremony at your library, the Library of Congress. And now it's my pleasure to welcome the chair of the National Endowment for the Arts, Dr. Maria Rosario Jackson. Thanks to Robin and to Nikki for that introduction. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. evening. I like call and respond. That's good. Um, sadly, I want to start the evening to, to, by taking a moment to recognize Senator Dianne Feinstein, who passed away, Senator Feinstein of California. Uh, we'll just take a moment to celebrate her life, to mourn her passing, and to honor her many, many years of public service. Thank you. We are so grateful 
to the Library of Congress and the American Folklife Center for hosting us tonight and for the years of collaboration in keeping the National Heritage Fellowship's archives. I can't think of a more fitting place for these archives to live than alongside our nation's other storytellers. The NEA National Heritage Fellows, whether they are musicians like the wonderful Joni Madden, who you just saw a few minutes ago, or craftspeople or dancers or advocates, they're all accomplished storytellers in their own way. Through their practice, they're weaving together the past, the present, with an eye towards the future, managing the productive tension between preservation and innovation inherent in all living culture. It's in this space, at the intersection of past, present, and future, and at the intersection of preservation and innovation, where creativity and our humanity thrive. We see this not only among our nine individuals who we're honoring tonight, but in the legacy of the more than 450 honorees over the last 40 plus years. The National Heritage Fellowships shine an important light on people committed to our living culture. These are people who also possess a spirit of generosity. These fellows are not only master artists, but also committed to sharing their knowledge with future generations and growing their communities of practice. These fellows help us express the rich diversity of our nation. They help us appreciate our commonalities and our meaningful differences. They help us understand that we're part of something bigger, bigger than ourselves, part of a lineage, tradition, community, and transcendent creativity. Tonight is especially meaningful because we're joined by members of the last three years of National Heritage Fellows. While the pandemic prevented us from celebrating these artists in, per in person previously, it's led to this historic gathering. These honorees had the opportunity yesterday to connect, learn from one another, and create bonds that will strengthen the folk and traditional arts field as a whole, as well as the communities in which they work. And we're just delighted and honored to have all of you and your family and friends here with us tonight. Before we begin our awards, I need to acknowledge a few people who have helped make this evening possible. In addition to Dr. Hayden, who leads the Library of Congress and her staff, special thanks to Nicole Saylor and her team at the Library of Congress's American Folklife Center for their tireless and passionate work to preserve and promote living cultural traditions. Thank you to our longtime partners at the National Council for the Traditional Arts, for their outstanding work presenting and documenting America's living heritage. Finally, thank you to Cheryl Sheely, Eric Whaler, Aaron Whaler, Jenny Terman, and Rachel McKean, who worked so hard on the NEA's Folk and Traditional Arts Program. Their passion, dedication, and expertise are assets to the arts endowment and to our country. And also thank you to our Office of Public Affairs at the NEA. And now, I invite the 2023 Class of National Heritage Fellows to join me on stage to receive their medals. Cheryl Sheely, Acting Director of Folk and Traditional Arts at the NEA, will join me to read the citations. This is your 2023 class of medalists. Please join me in welcoming Congressman Derek Kilmer from the state of Washington.
Good evening. If it seemed like I walked up a bit gingerly, I confess I, I pulled a hammy dancing to the Irish flutist backstage, so. Uh, flautist, was it flautist? Flute, okay, good, whistle player, better. Uh, I'm Derek Kilmer, I represent Washington State's sixth congressional district, and every day I'm proud to rep represent the district I've called home since I was just a kid. It's a district that's been home to the Squamish tribe since time immemorial. One of the greatest honors I've experienced is getting to know, before he passed, the Native American civil rights leader, Billy Frank Jr. Billy was consistent in advocating for tribal treaty rights, but he was also consistent in telling folks, young and old, three incredibly important words. Tell your story. That's exactly what Ed Carrier has done to earn tonight's honor. This evening, I stand before you with pride and gratitude to honor a member of the Suquamish tribe and a true custodian of the tribe's heritage. Ed's journey with basketry is an odyssey through time, reaching back into the history of the Suquamish people. From learning the age-old craft from his great-grandmother to his efforts in analyzing baskets that trace back to over 200 generations of tradition, Ed's commitment to preserving and evolving his craft is unparalleled. And learning more about Ed, what stood out to me is his unyielding thirst for knowledge. Not content with the wisdom of five generations, he went further, deeper, into the roots of his people's history, analyzing and recreating baskets from 4,500 years ago. His archaeology basket, a piece that weaves together the different eras of his ancestors, is a testament to this dedication. His collaboration with archaeologist Dale Crows, their book, Reawakening Ancient Sailor Sea Basketry, bridges the past and the present, providing a unique lens into the intertwining of culture and science. Their approach not only brings alive the basketry, but links it to his great-grandmother's teaching, a true homage to generations that came before. Recognition by the First Peoples Fund and the Society for American Archaeology underscores that the synergy of culture and science, as Ed's work shows us, truly has an impact far greater than each can achieve on its own. So, congratulations, Ed, and thank you for telling your story. I'd like to invite Ed Carrier to stand next to me. Ed, please. Oh, little Joe. From India, Nola Washington, a revered Squamish elder and leader in Coast Salish pastry traditions who learned from his great-grandmother, Julia Jacobs, a scholar who studied and reconstructed baskets unearthed from thousands of years from Salish Sea wet sites, a generous mentor and teacher carrying on the ancestral knowledge of the Susquamish people and lifeways. In recognition of his contributions, to Suquamish Basketry, the National Endowment for the Arts honors Ed Eugene Carrier, Suquamish.
Well, I sure uh, appreciate the honor of this uh, award. Uh, uh, I basket weaving was something that uh, I never dreamed would ever uh, come to a uh, presentation like this. Uh, <laughs> when uh, Oh, many years ago when I was told that uh, all these baskets will never sell or they'll never amount to anything. <laughs> but, uh, and then when I was told by my, uh, by my ancestors, now they're, they passed away, well, the, uh, the man was uh, allowed to weave the bottom of the basket. And then the ladies would, uh, the real weavers would weave the sides of the, uh, the body of the basket. Well, you, <laughs> when you think about that, I guess, <laughs> you know, you never see the bottom of the basket. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so, so then I got to thinking about that, and I said, "Well, I'm going to weave. I'm going to be a basket weaver, and I'm going to weave the whole basket, not just the bottom." <laughs> so, yeah. so I've devoted my pretty much my life to to weaving the uh, Pacific Northwest uh, native baskets and a few other baskets around the, around the world. So uh, as long as my hands will function and work, why I'll continue to do this and preserve that uh, particular part of our heritage our uh, Sequamish culture. So I just thank you for this award. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Jill Tokuda from the state of Hawaii. Aloha, everyone. Well, first of all, I just really want to thank the NEA and the Library of Congress for bringing us all back together so that we can celebrate these amazing, I think, national treasures that we have here before us that are helping to perpetuate culture and the arts, not just in the United States, but, but across the globe as well. Um, as the representative for Hawaii's second congressional district, it is truly my privilege and my honor to be with all of you today to recognize Rowan Kahalevai Hufford of Waimea, Hawaii, as a 2023 NEA National Heritage Fellow. Although, Rowan, I understand you were born on Molokai as well, and she's a fellow Windward girl, so if anyone is familiar with Hawaii, uh, she's just like me from the Windward side, um, but residing now uh, on the island of Hawaii uh, in Waimea. Today, we celebrate Rowan's lifelong work and dedication to reclaim and perpetuate the art of kahana kapa, the making of bark cloth, a time-consuming, I will tell you, labor-intensive process that returns us to the roots of our island home, heritage and culture, the tradition of our people. Early Hawaiians would use kapa for clothing, for blankets, footwear, canvases to depict sacred images and other special garments. In her own words, excuse me, Rowan says, kapa was as essential to life as food. It was used for nearly every aspect of life. Rowan, your efforts to not only preserve, but to perpetuate this rich piece of Hawaiian culture and to offer your time and expertise and energy to share these skills with our communities from Keiki to Kapuna gives us all reason to be grateful for the path you are perpetuating and preserving for future generations in Hawaii. Rowan's presence here today is no accident. 
It is part of a family legacy. Her mother, Marie Lelehua McDonald, was one of the great practitioners of Hawaiian laymaking and was recognized for her work as a 1990 NEA National Heritage Fellow. I know she would be very proud of you today and is looking down on us. Rowan, mahalo for your dedication to your art and your commitment to keeping alive the history and tradition of kapa making. Your leadership and your passion will serve as a source of inspiration to so many in Hawaii, across the Pacific, and throughout the world. Congratulations again, Rowan. Hawaii is so very, very proud of you. Mahalo, everyone. From Waimea, Hawaii, a knowledge keeper of Kanahana Kapa making bark cloth, who worked alongside her mother, Marie Lealua McDonald, in documenting and presenting Hawaiian traditions and values, a farmer and cultivator of the land for kapa making and the well being of her community, a generous mentor, teacher, and collaborator who has worked and demonstrated with Polynesian bark cloth makers across the Pacific. In recognition for her contributions to Hawaiian lifeways, values, and kapa making, the National Endowment for the Arts honors Rowan Kahalavai Hufford. Thank you. Let me say something. Thank you very much. I want to, first of all, Thank that highest creative force that makes all of this possible, that gives us uh, good teachers and inspiration um, in the, the, the plants and the animals that exist in our universe, and that we can use uh, them and honor them with our very important work. I also, uh, in hearing my name, I'm reminded of one part of it, which is vai, which means water. Um, that very important resource that we all need um, and how it can uh, impact our lives, um, especially if we don't have enough water. Uh, a friend reminded me that if you say va vai, Vai vai, that means wealth, riches. So you double the water and you get riches. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite Michael A. Cummings to stand here, please. From New York, New York, a masterful quilter in the African-American narrative quilting tradition, a perceptive cultural interpreter whose quilts depict African-American culture and experiences across historical, cultural, and philosophical realms. A distinguished artist whose work has been commissioned by the U.S. Department of State's Arts in Embassies Program, the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, and the White House, and has been exhibited across the world in recognition of his artistry and mastery of African-American narrative quilting, the National Endowment for the Arts honors Michael A. Cummings.
Well, it's been a long journey, and uh, I'm surprised that I'm here. Uh, I've always liked being an artist. I wanted to be an artist, and that was my dream. I kept the dream alive, and uh, now I'm here. And I want to thank everyone that made this possible, from the NEA to friends and family, and especially my mother. And um, thank you very much. I'd like to invite Joe DeLeon Hernandez to stand. Yes! <laughs> From Temple, Texas, a Tejano music pioneer, expertly producing and combining Norteño country and blues music, a dynamic performer, affectionately called the king of brown sound, whose music uplifts enthusiastic audiences, a leader in his community, supporting important causes such as United Farm Works, Farm Aid, and the Diabetes Educational Campaign Project, in recognition of his contributions to the nation's musical landscape and his pioneering artistic contributions to Tejano music, the National Endowment for the Arts honors Joe De Leon, Little Joe Hernandez. I am totally honored, humbled, and profoundly grateful for this incredible and wonderful award and recognition. I thank everyone that has hosted us here and all, uh, just everyone that's been part of this fantastic three days that we've been in, here. And I am thinking of my parents My little brother, Jesse, who foresaw this. And I promised at his graveside that I would continue to work as hard as I could to reach the heights and music that he, he wanted me to, that dreamed for me. So I've been a blessed man and had an interesting and long career. I've been touring for 62, 63 years. And this recognition, this award, is a wonderful punctuation mark and exclamation mark on my life. And as I said, I am totally grateful for everyone that's made it possible and for those that I stood on their shoulders to be here today. Muchísimas gracias y Dios nos bendiga. Thank you. I'd like to invite Wuban to stand.
from Carlsbad, California, a masterful pipa player, musician, and collaborator, an artist who expertly bridges a link between Eastern and Western instrumentation and musical styles, a gifted educator and mentor, sharing her knowledge with pipa students and audiences across the world. In recognition of her artistry and command of pipa performance, the National Endowment for the Arts honors Wu Men. I'm uh, very excited, but also nervous. <laughs> um, I'm deeply honored to uh, stand before you today as a recipient of the National Heritage Award. Um, this recognition means, to, uh, means the world to me, and I would like to express my um, heartfelt gratitude to National Endowments for the Arts for this incredible honor. Um, for me, the PIPA, has been not just an instrument, but a bridge that connects cultures, transcends boundaries, and spares the universal language of music. It has allowed me to travel through the rich history of Chinese tradition while collaborating with musicians from all corners of the globe. When I moved to America more than 30 years ago, I was provided um, fertile ground to, on, on which to grow as a musician, a performer, and an educator. Since then, my journey with the PIPA has allowed me to transcend the genre and bring together the East and the West in unexpected ways. American continues to offer endless opportunity for my musical creation and for what I'm, that I'm being very um, especially thankful. Um, this award is not just a celebration of my work, it's a tribute to the power of music as a force for unity, understanding, and compassion. It reminds us that the arts knows no borders. Music reminds us that we are more li alike than different. And it is my hope that through my music, I can continue to, break, to build the bridge, to break down the barriers, and inspire others to embrace the beauty of diversity. Once again, thank you for this extraordinary uh, recognition. I will treasure it always. And I pleasure to continue um, to dedicate my life to the art of PIPA and the spirit of cultural exchange. And uh, happily today is a traditional Chinese festival, which is Mid-Autumn Moon Festival. So happy Moon Festival. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next honoree is receiving the Bess Lomax Hawes National Heritage Fellowship, which honors keepers of tradition who have had a major beneficial effect on traditional arts in the United States through their efforts as organizers, educators, producers, and cultural advocates. I'd like to invite Nick Spitzer to stand. from New Orleans, Louisiana, an influential public folklorist, 
radio producer, presenter, and educator, a cultural interpreter whose work stretches across the world, authoring several books and articles, producing over 650 radio programs, and presenting on heritage arts into the far reaches, including tours across US, Europe, and China. A scholar receiving accolades from Guggenheim, ASCAP, Un University of Louisiana, the Louisiana Folklore Society, and the American Folklore Society, among others, in recognition of his contributions to the arts and humanities and ardently supporting traditional arts, the National Endowment for the Arts honors Nick Spitzer. Wow, I never thought I'd be standing here. I, I know so many of you over the years, programs, uh, folk masters at Wolf Trap and Carnegie and uh, on that on the National Mall, the American Roots Fourth of July, and uh, working at Smithsonian, all my friends at NCTA, the great late Joe Wilson. Uh, I met uh, Bess Lomax Hawes um, f with Joe Wilson at the 1976 uh, Festival of American Folklife and uh, Bess and I quickly became uh, colleagues and Bess helped me understand how to be a public folklorist and encouraged me to go to Louisiana uh, after I'd been working in Afro-Creole communities in Southwest and uh, we were part of a first generation of public folklorists there and so I'm in very close to Bess and, and also her brother Alan so I never thought I'd be standing here and some of you probably know for 17 years I did the, the uh, shows uh, for the Heritage Award, so uh, so it's odd to be the recipient of the award. I'm I, I'm a person who makes uh, my activity primarily asking questions of others, and now everyone's asking questions of me. Uh, but one question I I have to answer uh, is my first inspiration was my mother, uh, Virginia Randolph Spitzer, uh, from a des descended from an abolitionist family in Virginia, growing up around New York City, who really had a strong sense of public spirit. Uh, she was the daughter uh, of a single mother, and, and she was an only child, and her mother was a suffragette. And so she instilled in me the idea that all people had value all culture had value. And as a child in New York City, she told me to go hear the double Dutch girls playing on the sidewalk, but don't drive your trag through their rope. <laughs> and and uh, she introduced me to uh, Puerto Rican boys a little older than me skating around on homemade skateboards, you know, with fruit crate on the front. And then when we moved to rural Connecticut to follow my father's work, uh, we, uh, uh, she, she introduced me to people like uh, shad fishermen and witch hazel harvesters and um, all, all manner of uh, traditionalists. And the most important to me was she introduced me to the game warden who was a Native American. And of course, I thought everyone had feathers and lived somewhere out west. And he was an Uncas a tribal member and knew everything about the woods and the forests and the animals. So she always attuned me to that. And, and I'm just lucky to have had that um, in my background. I mean, she, I saw her conduct interviews and I guess I, I took after some of that. Uh, working with Bess also meant working with uh, Dan Sheehy, my good friends Barry Burgey at NEA, uh, Joe Wilson we mentioned, and all the good folks at Smithsonian and, and, and Library of Congress. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of my teachers. Those of you who know the field of folklore know Archie Green, who helped found the American Folklife Center, a labor historian and folklorist who taught public folklore. Uh, also at the University of Texas, a man I'd never met, taught the most difficult class I've ever taken two semesters of intellectual history of folklore and anthropology, the great Americo Paredes, who passed before these wards were initiated, but was a border singer and a journalist, and I just learned so much from him. And then Roger Abrams, uh, who uh, grew up in Philadelphia and wrote a very important book on the corner man in the city at a time when it just wasn't cool to do urban African-American folklore in the early 60s. 
uh, and uh, both of all three of these gentlemen are gone, but my great mentor uh, in Philadelphia at Penn, um, John Zwed is here this evening. He has a new book on Harry Smith. He's written on Miles Davis and Sun Ra and, uh, you know, just unending. And he taught me that, that you could look at contemporary modern jazz as vernacular culture and as a folk art. So I learned a lot from a lot of people uh, and I'm just happy to be here. And I want to mention my family is here. My wife, Tanya, and here's little Will down here. Uh, Will, uh, thank you for not crying too much. And uh, my middle son, Gardner, who is uh, a freshman at Temple, uh, involved in honors programs and uh, uh, environmental studies, and my sister, Susan, and her husband, Richard. So it's a family affair tonight. And just meeting all these folks is just amazing. So thank you so much, NEA. <laughs> and so many people here. <laughs> I wouldn't be here without you. I'd like to invite Elizabeth James Perry to stand. Sure. From Dartmouth, Massachusetts, a wampum fiber artist whose exquisite artistry is intimately tied to her quina Wapanoag tribal homeland in Naope, also known as Martha's Vineyard. A prolific teacher and culture keeper, mentoring tribal members and educating the public on wampum and the indigenous care of coastal lands. An accomplished artist who has demonstrated and exhibited her pieces across the nation, including at the Machin uh, sorry, Machinatic Paco Museum, the new Bedford Whaling Museum, and the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. In recognition of her mastery in wampum and fiber art for the perpetuation of Aquina Wampanoag culture, the National Endowment for the Arts honors Elizabeth James Perry. Um, it's such an amazing honor to be here, um, and I have to express my gratitude towards the NEA and Mass Cultural Council and all of the organizations in Massachusetts, but especially my community of Aquina Wampanoag, my family, um, and extended family, and my teachers, many of whom have passed but I hope that they can hear my gratitude today and think about having an impact many generations down from here and continuing on. Thank you, Aho. Please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Teresa Leger Fernandez from New Mexico. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Hello, everybody. Ay, Dios mío. Ay, Dios mío. Ay, Dios mío. It gives me such pleasure. I am smiling from the inside out to look at all of our honorees. Uh, but tonight, I get to introduce somebody who has not, who has understands 
the fact that us Nuevo Mexicanos, the Catholics in New Mexico, we believe our saints are among us all the time. We talk to them all the time. We're always having conversations. And what Luis has done is he has sculpted those santos who live and walk among us. He has painted them. And he has brought them to life in a way that depicts everything that they cry about in our lives, that they join with us in having the sorrow of the pain that sometimes we carry, and also the joy. Porque tenemos mucha buena comida, no? Because we love, he does santos of the ones that make food too. And so it is my incredible honor to introduce the honoree, El Santero Luis Tapia. From Santa Fe, New Mexico, a celebrated sculptor in the Hispano wood carving tradition, a cultural transmitter, skillfully illustrating the Chicano culture of New Mexico and thought provoking social commentary through sculpture. And an, an accomplished artist whose work graces the collections of the Museum of International Folk Art, the National Museum of Mexican Art, the National Hispanic Cultural Center Art Museum, and the Denver Art Museum, among many others, in recognition of his artistry in Hispano wood carving, the National Endowment for the Arts, honors Luis Tapia. I didn't realize I'd done all that. That's all news to me. Orale National Endowment of the Arts. <laughs> I want to thank the NEA for this wonderful award. It's, it's, it's breathtaking for me. It weakens me in the knees, man. I tell you, I never expected anything such, such an award for me, for, for myself. And I also want to thank the NEA staff. You've been fantastic these last three days with us. You've taken care of us. I never felt safer in my life. <laughs> and there's also people I'd like to thank uh, that nominated, a person that nominated me for this wonderful award, uh, Laura Addison. I also want to thank the people that submitted letters of, of, of uh, support. Tay Nunn, who I believe is here. And uh, uh, I also want to thank uh, Dana Joya, uh, Donna Pierce, Nick Herrera, and Nicolas Otero. But I also want to thank my NEA fellows, my brothers in art. Standing next to you gave me great pride. I felt your spirit, I felt your strength, and I will take that with me. Thank you. So congratulations again to the 2023 NEA National Heritage Fellows. There's someone else who we'd like to acknowledge who's not in attendance, and that's R.L. Boyce from Como, Mississippi, a singer, guitarist, and leading figure in the Hill Country Blues tradition for over four decades. 
a knowledge keeper of the African-American fife and drum tradition learned at, the age, at an early age from his uncle, Otha Turner, a spirited performer whose enduring voice and guitar playing transports audiences to northern Mississippi. In recognition of his contributions to the nation's musical landscape and African-American culture, the National Endowment for the Arts honors R.L. Boyce. So we, this is a very special evening because we also take this opportunity to recognize our last three years of honorees, many of whom are here tonight. We had the pleasure of sharing their stories through film and I encourage you all to visit arts.gov to watch our videos and learn more about them. First up is the class of 2020. Fellows, please stand as I say your name and remain standing as we recognize the full class. And audience, I'll ask you to please hold your applause until the end of the group. With us here tonight, Naomi Dioff, West African diasporic drummer. Aaron, Karen Ann Hoffman, Oneida Nation of Wisconsin, Haudenosaunee raised beadworker, Los Matachines de la Santa Cruz de la Ladrillera, traditional religious dancers. Hugo Morales, radio producer and radio network builder. John Morris, old time fiddler and banjo player. Wayne Valier, Lac de Flambeau Ojibwe, birch bark canoe builder. We also recognize those from the class of 2020 who could not be with us tonight. William Bell, soul singer and songwriter, Onik Dikjan, Armenian folk and liturgical singer, Suni Paz, Nueva Cancion, singer and songwriter, as well as Zachariah Diof, who sadly passed away in 2021. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Next, the class of 2021. With us here tonight are Tagumpay Mendoza de Leon, Rondalia musician. Anita Fields, Osage Muskogee, Osage ribbon worker and artist. Joni Madden, Irish flute player. Reginald McLaughlin, tap dancer. And Winsboro Easter Rock Ensemble, Easter Spiritual Ensemble. We, we, also, we also recognize the class of 21, uh, 2021, Cedric Burnside, Hill Country Blues musician and songwriter, Tom Davenport, filmmaker, documentarian, and media curator, Los Lobos, Mexican-American band, Nellie Vera Mundillo, master weaver. Congratulations to the class of 2021. And now our class of 2022. With us here tonight are Eva Insignias, flamenco artist. If you can hold your applause. Excelsior Band, Brass Band Musicians. Stanley Jacobs, Quelbe Flutist and Band Leader. The legendary Ingramets, Gospel Artists. Taniba Natani, Navajo Dine Textile Artist and Weaver. Francis Palani Sinensi, Native Hawaiian. Master Hawaiian Hale Builder. Siering Wang Mosato, Tibetan opera singer and dancer. C. Brian Williams, step artist and producer. Shaka Zulu, New Orleans black masking craftsman, stilt dancer and musician. 
And we also recognize Michael Cleveland, who's a bluegrass fid fiddler who could not be with us tonight. Congratulations to the class of 2022. So thank you to everyone here for joining us tonight for this beautiful celebration. And thank you to the National Heritage Fellows for sharing your talent, dedication, and generosity with you, with us. A grateful nation celebrates you. Thanks, everyone. And now I'll turn things over to Cheryl Sheely. So we've come to the conclusion of the ceremony. Thank you all for coming. Guests who responded to the receive or received a reception invitation, please proceed to the Great Hall for a check-in. And to all of you here and at home watching, have a wonderful evening.